Hi, everybody. This is Scott McLeod with another episode of the Coronavirus Chronicles. I have here with me today Jeff Palladino. He's the principal of Fannie Lou Hamer Freedom High School. Um, Jeff, thanks for being here. Um, Fannie Lou Hamer is part of the Big Picture Learning Network, right? Which is an uh, uh, international network of project and inquiry based learning schools. Why don't you tell us a little bit about um, Fannie Lou Hamer? You know, where's the school located? What kind of students and families do you serve? Yeah, uh, and thanks for having me, Scott. Appreciate it. Um, it's great to, to join you. Um, Fannie Lou Hamer Freedom High School is, uh, we're, we have a couple of connections. One, obviously, is with Big Picture Learning, uh, which, like you said, is an international school that focuses on, like, individualized learning and internship-based learning. And then we're also part of the New York Performance Consortium, which is um, a uh, New York City and uh, state uh, organization of about 35, 40 schools that focus on uh, graduation by portfolio. Um, uh, we are one of eight um, schools uh, that are part of the Performance Consortium that is located in the Bronx, New York. Um, and technically, not technically, but we are located in the poorest congressional district in the country, uh, in the Bronx. Um, and so our students are, um, we have a very, uh, high, probably close to 90% um, low socioeconomic uh, student body that we work with. Um, and uh, the school's been around for 25 years. So Jeff, l learning at Fannie Lou Hamer has always looked a lot different than probably most traditional schools. Why don't you talk a little bit about what that learning has looked like before, and then maybe, you know, as importantly for this series, how did you move that kind of learning into these remote settings? Yeah, um, so our school, a couple of things. One, uh, we are a project-based learning school. We do um, focus on, um, specifically when kids come to us in ninth grade, uh, ninth and tenth grade is specifically focused on the habits of mind uh, for our students, right? So uh, how do you help kids uh, uh, like uh, understand that they are these intellectual beings that they are? And so. How do you focus on uh, what is your viewpoint about a certain subject? How do you collect evidence to support that viewpoint? Um, how do you use conjecture? Like what if something happened differently and how would that impact uh, the, the, um, the content? Uh, relevancy, uh, why is this important? Why are we learning it? And connections, right? How does this connect to something else in the real world or something else that we've been learning? So all of our work is like funneled through the use of the habits of mind and helping kids build those skills through specific content. Um, our content is delivered in like uh, kids do small ex like exhibitions that are like large projects that, that, they're, that they're doing um, when they come in. We don't, um, there's not a lot of coverage. We don't cover the history of the world in two years. You know, we study subjects and we study them deeply. deeply. So the Haitian Revolution or the Holocaust or um, what makes, you know, is the Bronx River healthy? So there are subjects that we take a few weeks looking at and use the lens of the habits of mind to, to help kind of like help kids understand uh, how they can like use their intellectual curiosity uh, in their academic schoolwork. So Jeff, as you've transitioned that to remote, right, or distance yeah. learning, so what does that look like? So yeah, I mean, yeah, it's... Uh, you know, the, you know, we faced a lot of challenges, like most schools, I think, you know, with the, the moving from remote learning uh, from the brick and mortar building. I think, uh, you know, we had some things in our factor that we were able to be nimble about and like kind of pivot real fast. Um, one is like just the fact that we have an advisory system um, where, you know, one teacher is responsible for like, uh, somewhere like 18 students and they're like kind of holistic, you know, uh, you know, the holistic part of the kids, like their, their families, how are they doing socially, their academic work. And so, you know, we knew being in a school uh, in the poorest congressional district that a lot of our students didn't have Wi-Fi, A lot of our students didn't have laptops, um, and, which is, I think, you know, some of the, uh, you, know, you know, a lot of other schools had some of those uh, issues. Um, I'm sure some, didn't, but ours did. So we had to pivot real quick and get laptops and Wi-Fi, and and you know a lot of families that have uh, have you know, food uh, scarcity. And so how do we get uh, food and um, 
and gift cards and uh, hygiene products to families because we, we knew we would be out for a little while. I don't think we anticipated this long, but, but we knew we would be out for a while. So we took a couple of days right after um, we knew we'd be closed to, to, to pivot that way. And, and, and on top of that, we had to make sure everyone was connected to, by Google Classroom. So all of our teachers were using Google Classroom to, to keep in touch with kids to you know, send their their assignments out, um, and then from there, like really the most important thing, and and you know, I think a lot of people have talked about this is like the relationships that adults have with kids is the thing that's carried us. Like the fact that um, you know, we, we I have found in our school that uh, online like classes has not been the most successful modality for helping kids in their work. Um, getting twenty five kids or, you know, in a Zoom, you know, for an hour at the same time in a day is not, hasn't, like, has not been the thing that's worked the most for us. It's worked in spots here and there, but really um, small group instruction, conferencing, one-on-one -on -one office hours, like working with kids, you know, so sending out the assignments through Google Classroom and then really setting up time to meet with kids uh, in small groups and individually is the thing that's kind of really worked the best. Interesting. So, Jeff, um, you've got kids working on projects. Um, often those, yep. those were connected to the outside community. Um, you know, I've seen from a lot of schools and districts that even if they were sort of making moves towards greater agency or deeper learning or, you know, authentic real world work, that they kind of reverted back to some really lowest levels of learning you know, at the pandemic, because that was the easiest stuff to get out to kids, right? Like, we can very quickly figure out how to get homework packets or worksheets out, right? So, so is it possible to do inquiry-based learning, you know, from a distance? Yeah, I mean, I think the best example of, uh, you know, and, and like one of the things that, that, that it's kind of been my tagline since this is all going on is I keep talking to people about this is the, this is the best real life, real time professional development many of us are ever gonna participate in. Like it's like, it is constant, there's a constant feedback loop and this is, this is what we're trying and this is going to work or it's not going to work. And like, we're getting a lot of information, like, you know, at some point when the world stops spinning, we'll have to sit down and, uh, and uh, you know, um, take all everything that we've learned and like, think about how we're moving forward now. Um, I think the best example of, of your question is uh, um, uh, March, mid March was our regular, um, Late March was our, our yearly science fair. Uh, it's, a, it's, you know, it's kids come up with uh, projects based on something that they're interested in and they did just some, just uh, start using scientific inquiry and the teachers coach them through like these, these, these small group projects that they want to do. And, uh, you know, we were headed towards um, quarantine uh, right as the science projects were coming up. And so the, our science teachers in 9th and 10th grade said, you know, um, we're going to do them anyway. Like we're going to keep, we're going to keep doing them. We're not, we're not, let's, let's see what kids have around their house. Let's see what they could get and to, to do science, to do a science there and, uh, and, 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 and use scientific inquiry from materials at the house. And so what we did was um, we uh, teachers used, um, gave them like two, three weeks to like find them, find stuff in the house. Like, you know, you know, do ice ice cubes melt in different types of you know, liquids? Um, how does uh, uh, what you know different type of soil that's in the local park in my neighborhood will it grow seeds better? And so kids just use anything that was in their um, the, in their vicinity of their of their apartment or their house or their neighborhood to devise um, science fair projects. And and what they used was then they used the flip grid which is uh, where kids can make small videos uh, and, and insert slides in it. So they, they use Flipgrid to do these science, um, science projects. And then every kid had to then reply to the student's science project. Uh, you had to reply to at least five other science projects. So it was a first, like, it was like our first big, like, exhibition coming, like, in quarantine that, you know, that was still, like, project-based that used, like, kids' own inquiry um, and, and not some, not some like packet that teachers just sent out to them, but gave kids in, like some agency over, um, over, over what they were doing. And, and we had some really nice results with that. Cool. 
So Jeff, as you think about some decisions that your leadership team has made over the last couple of months, what are some things that have worked really well for you all? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I, you know, I always feel like that none of the decisions are any good. <laughs> um, uh, I, I think, you know, I think we set people up pretty well to, to, to go on uh, distance learning. Like I didn't, like, again, I don't think we knew how long it would be for, um, but I think the way, I think we, I think we set it up pretty, pretty well with the idea of like the whole school wasn't on Google classroom before we left, but we made sure everybody was, uh, we really made sure our families knew that we were there for them and communicating with them. And we're still like, helping take care of them, even though we weren't together. Um, and so we also um, moved our professional development to twice a week uh, house meetings where, because the schools broke up into small houses, where we could utilize that time on checking up on individual kids, um, you know, making sure, uh, like, you know, you know, we're hearing from everybody. Uh, when kids dropped off, I always imagine uh, during distance learning that this is like a, like a Venn diagram. Like you have kids in the middle who are constant throughout the whole thing. And then you have like these kids on this side who were with us for two weeks and then they won't be with us for two weeks, but the kids from the other side will then be with us. And so like you're getting everybody, but it's at you're in waves. And so um, the consistency of some of the strong structural parts of the school, like advisory, like house meetings, like, teachers really knowing kids well and talk and sharing their information about that. We've kept them the same. So even though we, we went from brick and mortar to digital, those structures like help some normalcy in, in, in our, in our staff, I think, and, and in the, in our school so we can keep moving forward through this like really, really difficult time. So Jeff, you know, you mentioned earlier that, you know, you're not a high school that has typically been uber concerned with coverage, right? Like many schools are where we have to cram a thousand, you know, standards into our instruction. Um, we're hearing a lot of conversations nationally from policymakers and maybe some school leaders that they're worried about learning loss. So how can you help them think about that? Like, what would you say to a policymaker who said, we're really worried about learning loss and standards coverage and the test next year and, right? Yeah. No, I mean, I think, well, like, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I think well, the thing that we think about a lot is how do we, uh, how do we help our kids build their skills and build their intellectual, you know, uh, um, prowess in the world? And so how do you help? And I think one of the things that we talk about is the habits of mind as a way of, as a vehicle to do that. And also the idea that, um, you know, like the world has changed a lot as we know, right? And so, you know, all the information that kids can or want to get content is like right here on their phone or, or on their computer. Like they can access content like, you know, very easily and, and, and very quick. I mean, I think the thing that we try to do at our school is to really honor um, the, the, the thinking and um, what our kids, uh, you know, can show that they can do through their writing, through the projects that they do, like the idea that what they, they're, they're you know, we, what we're really are trying to do is to, you know, to create young people who have a say in the world and who, who have a viewpoint and, and can be activists and, and have a, you know, take a stance on, on issues that are important to them. So our work through our portfolios and through our masteries helps kids do that. And so that is what we value as creating young people who are independent thinkers, but who also could work in groups and who also could, um, you know, like see, uh, you know, see society and see issues in society where they want to have an impact on and have a vehicle to, to move for, forward with that, with, with uh, like the use of the habits of mind as a way of framing their thinking. And so that, that, that is what we value. And, and, and I wish, you know, more lawmakers, uh, would value that because I mean that's and and that can't be done in a in a in a packaged curriculum that's delivered online, right? I mean that has to do with caring individuals who are adults in the building with you who could push your thinking, but could push your thinking in a way that 
you know, the relationship is still there. And so young people know that you care about them, but you're willing to challenge their thinking and to try to, you know, to get them to, 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 to see different angles to something, but also to defend their thoughts about something. But the idea that they can't just defend it because, you know, because they think they're right, they need to defend it by doing research and having evidence to back up their points. And so I think that's, you know, I mean, I think that's, I wish more lawmakers would think that because community schools like a school like Fannie Lou, um, you know, are, are what is still needed. And, and, you know, as we move forward, you know, we can't think we're just going to, um, you know, package curriculum up and, you know, and, and, you know, send things out uh, and, and not have, uh, you know, the important relationships that are in schools. Absolutely. Jeff, this has been awesome. Thank you so much. As you look back over the last few months, you look ahead to the next few months, anything else you want to share? Uh, no, I mean, I just really, I mean, again, I, I really think that um, uh, the longer, you know, schools don't have young people and staff in them working together, um, the harder I think it is to do good school that has an impact on a democracy, um, which is why I believe in public education, right? And so, um, you know, I, you know, I know, especially in a place, you know, where we are in the Bronx, which is really the, like the epicenter of the epicenter of uh, the coronavirus in the United States. Um, I'm really looking forward to the day that, you know, we can get our kids back uh, uh, with us in the building, at least for a small fraction of time, to keep them connected to us so we can keep doing like good, meaningful work with them. Um, and, uh, you know, we know there'll be some type of, I mean, you know, hybrid model at some point, maybe next year. I mean, I mean, that's what I'm guessing. I, I mean, I don't know if the, I don't know, obviously don't know any real information, but I, I still know uh, nothing, nothing changes the fact that uh, you need face-to-face -face time with kids to build relationships and to, and to help them, you know, uh, you know, with their work and, and help them, you know, you know, just, you know, foster their intellectual, intellectual, you know, uh, curiosity and, uh, it, you know, connected to their academic work. And so I'm just looking forward to that time we can get back to doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Nicely said, Jeff. Um, Fannie Lou Hamer Freedom High School in the Bronx. Check it out. They're doing amazing learning and teaching, even from a distance. Jeff, appreciate your time today. Good luck with the last few weeks of school. Thanks, Scott. Best luck to you, too.